So we've seen that measuring distances is an almost impossibly hard problem. There are just so many reasons why it's difficult. But it's also absolutely vital if you understand what universe we actually live in as opposed to what the theorists tell us. However, things have got much better. Now, why is that, Brian? Well, it's because we've invested a huge amount of money, $2 billion plus, in the Hubble Space Telescope. And the Hubble Space Telescope was really designed to go out and solve the distance ladder problem, to be able to have the resolution and sensitivity to literally see Cepheid stars in not just a handful of nearby galaxies, but in lots of nearby galaxies. So here's a r recent paper showing a nearby galaxy, and the, uh, the you can just about see the green and red and yellow circles indicate various Cepheid galaxies, uh, Cepheid stars in this galaxy. And you can see that it's finding lots of them in a much more distant galaxy. How far out can it go? So I think the most distant uh, Cepheid it's done reliably is at about 30 megaparsecs. So that's a volume that is, you know, 10 cubed further than we used to be able to go. So it's a lot further. And in particular, so, so first of all, you can get many more galaxies and therefore calibrate things like Tully Fisher much more accurately. But you can also, within that larger volume, find a reasonable number of galaxies that have hosted type 1a supernovae. That's right. And this is one of the reasons my colleague Adam Reese, who... Uh, helped discover the accelerating universe with me and our team, uh, has been going out and uh, trying to measure accurate distance to the nearby galaxies so he could calibrate these type 1a supernovae. Now it turns out that uh, in addition to this, which is what Hubble was built for, it had a rather unexpected another benefit in terms of getting distance ladder, which is um, the trouble with Cepheids is you can measure the Cepheids here, so they take repeated pictures and look for the brightness changes, measure the brightness, and then compare that to the, the Levitt law back to the Large Magellanic Cloud, but we still don't know how far away the Large Magellanic Cloud is. But it turns out that the Hubble Space Telescope has an instrument called the Fine Guidance Sensor, which is actually not supposed to be a science instrument. It's just supposed to help it line up on target and stay pointing. But it turns out that this instrument allows you to measure parallaxes much more accurately than anything else at the moment. And so it has actually been able to get distances out far enough that you can actually measure parallaxes for a small number of Cepheids in our own galaxy, in the own Milky Way. It's only about 10, I think, at the moment. And the errors on distances are still about 10% or 12% or thereabouts. But nonetheless, this means if you can bypass the Magellanic Cloud and measure Cepheids in our own galaxy, our own galaxy has a high amount of these heavy elements, very similar to other galaxies like this one that we're looking for. So the whole question about whether the Cepheids vary with the different um, amount of heavy elements in the large magnetic cloud can be bypassed. Yeah, so this has been sort of an unexpected gain from the Hubble Space Telescope. And it turns out that in looking at the distant universe, they've also added an infrared camera to the Hubble Space Telescope. And that's had an extra uh, benefit. So uh, Adam Reese, when he goes out, and does one of these Cepheid distances, he uses the optical camera to find the Cepheids, and then he goes and uses this camera meant to look at the distant universe to take pictures of those areas, and you can see it's a mess, right? So let's just look here. Here's a picture in two areas of the infrared, and the dust is much smaller here. It's, it's almost negligible. And then you'll see, for example, a Cepheid here, or a Cepheid here, and these are in the other color. And the problem you have, of course, is, is that one star or is that several? So it's a real problem that uh, the Hubble Space Telescope is just barely able to do. But it has been a way to go through to get rid of that pesky problem of dust. It would be even better if we could measure parallaxes to Cepheids, a lot of them in our own galaxy. At the moment, we can measure it from maybe 10 to rather low precision. And the trouble is, these tend to be the lower mass ones, the more common ones. Those whereas are the, the closer ones, yep. Uh, whereas the ones we actually want, the ones we're seeing in distant ones, tend to be the higher mass, brighter ones. So you're not quite comparing like with like. So they can calibrate the lower uh, mass ones, but then you have to use the slope of the correlation in the Magellanic clouds to go to the further ones. And Maybe that works, maybe it doesn't. It's just maybe a step you'd like to avoid. Maybe it depends on metallicity again. So what we really need is a dedicated space mission to measure astrometry. Parallaxes. Parallaxes, how, where objects are in the sky very, very accurately. And the European Space Agency has recently launched one called Gaia, which has started its project and is going to be completely awesome. This instrument doesn't look particularly deep, doesn't look particularly faint, it doesn't go at funny wavelengths or anything like that, 
but it's incredibly stable. Nothing changes. So you can look for these very slight wobbles with unbelievable precision. It's also put out at the Lagrange point, not close to the Earth, otherwise the heat from the Earth would warm it up and cool it down as it goes in and out of the shadow and give you all sorts of grief. So the thing is basically a rotating cylinder containing a number of mirrors and telescopes inside, looking out from the slits of the side, and all protected by a sunshade. So a rotating oil drum, well insulated. And so as it rotates around, stars come in, and it's detected by this essentially a black box. It's a very complicated instrument because one of the problems is being way out at the Lagrange point, you're so far away that it's very difficult to have a high-speed data link. And this thing is going to literally scan the entire sky, every star, billions of objects. And it can't afford to send the data down as images. What it has to do is have an onboard uh, black box that goes through and looks at the images and measures everything exciting about it, the so-called metadata, which is a big deal in Australia right now, because our politicians don't understand metadata very well. That metadata is uh, going to be shipped down to Earth, and over five years or so, you'll have covered the entire sky. And it has two beams, they're about 105 degrees apart or something like that. Yes. And it's measuring the position relative at very high precision in these two beams. So it'll know where everything is in the sky relative to something far away. And then later it'll be at some different orientation and measure this one relative to that one. And it will go over and do it over and over again, measuring the sort of get absolute positions of everything to enormous precision. And it will be able to measure parallaxes out to how far? It's a I think it's getting into a couple kiloparsecs, so several thousand parsecs. And that means we'll be able to see many, many stars, many, many Cepheids. Uh, we'll learn sort of a lot about not just the distance scale, but how the Milky Way formed, because we'll be able to see the motions. And it turns out chemistry of essentially every star nearby in the Milky Way. So in a few years' time, when they get all the data out, they can't really get any data until it's all finished, because they have to map the whole sky because of their differential measurement. They can't just publish this little bit of the sky and that little bit. They have to get everything and then put it through a horrendously complicated data analysis process. But when it's all done, we will actually have nailed Cepheids to many billions of stars in our own galaxy, um, and the, the Cepheids within that will allow us to get the, that... Um, first step of the distance that are really accurate. So the combination of Hubble Space Telescope plus Gaia will get the Cepheid distance scale on a much more secure footing.